Happy Perm, everyone. All right, welcome. Um, not what I expected for the uh, 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 class today, but I think we're going to have to make do. Uh, let me just first talk for a few minutes. This is my house, this is my office. You can see there's a sign of the declaration over one shoulder and the sign of the constitution with the other, uh, some trinkets in the background. Uh, you'll be seeing this background for quite some bit. Uh, I have actually a very good camera, a very good mic. It's called a blue snowball, so it should sound pretty good. If it doesn't, let me know. I do a lot of podcasting and recording, uh, so hopefully this will be uh, as painless as possible. Uh, these sessions are recorded. Um, I will also upload um, live streaming to YouTube. Uh, don't worry, you will not be on YouTube. I will not put your face on YouTube, I promise. That would be really weird. Uh, but you will at least all have uh, an easy version on YouTube. You can play at double speed. And the school will also uh, put this in the local streaming server. Um, I've muted all of you, um, and that's deliberate. Um, if you've never done video chat before, the way this works is only one person gets to talk at a time. If everyone tries to talk, it creates feedback, and it sounds absolutely awful. So I'm going to mute you, and when I start calling people, say, can you please unmute yourself, and I'll ask you a question, and hopefully you'll answer it correctly. And after you answer the question, you'll then mute yourself, and I'll go into the next person. Um, people will forget, it's fine, I can mute you on demand, so if you forget, I'll do it for you. Um, logistically, uh, it's going to be a little bit weird. Um, you are losing something, and I don't want to make light of this. Uh, the school didn't reach this conclusion lightly. Um, I think the world has changed very radically over the past 24 to 48 hours. Uh, we don't know quite what to expect, um, but you're still all here. Um, I hope you're all healthy. Uh, I have some students who are out of town. I have some students who are in Houston. Wherever you are, stay put. Um, and, and don't do anything funny. Um, we're going to go through class as normal and as straightforward as I can. We'll see how this goes. Um, a couple of you are asking about the virtual backgrounds. Uh, I see a few. Blake has a Disney World one. Uh, that's very nice. Chris has a beach. I like that. That's very good. Um, I think if you go preferences, if you go at the top Zoom preferences, and there'll be an option for virtual background, so I can make myself at the Supreme Court. That's better. You like that? I don't know. Uh, you can go anywhere you want, uh, or a beach, or anything else. Um, I prefer to have none, but you can do whatever you like. Um, there's a chat window on the right. If you have, yes, you're not supposed to travel. If you, if you have any questions, you can put them there. Um, but there's also an option for you to raise your hand. Um, uh, in your interface, you might see a thing that says raise hand. Uh, if you click that, I'll know to call on you. Um, but also, you can give reactions. You can give me a thumbs up if you're happy. Um, I don't know. You're not required to do that. Uh, but the chat might be the easiest way to get a question quickly, or you can raise your hand and I'll call on you. Um, I currently have, I think, almost 70 people. So I think just about the entire class is here, which makes me uh, very happy. Um, some of you have your cameras off. I don't really care about that today. Um, but at some point, the school will make you turn your camera on. Um, why? ABA. They want to make sure that you're actually attending class in like a fashion that's reasonable. Uh, we've had people in the past who put on their Zoom while they're driving. I'm not joking. People put on their Zoom when they're at the gym, on the, on the treadmill. Uh, don't do that. Uh, being a place that's quiet. Now, I understand people are home. Husbands, wives, kids may make noise. I have a 15-month-old daughter. She may start crying any minute. Hopefully, I'll be okay. Someone else is watching her now. But uh, my goal is to uh, make this. So today, if your camera's off, that's fine. But just figure it out for next time as a way to keep us somewhat in track. Um, any questions so far? I can't see all of you at once. I have to scroll through four different screens. Uh, any questions? No? Okay. And let, let me make one last point. I know you're all thinking about the exam and the finals. Um, we'll, we'll get there. I don't have any answers for you. Um, <clears throat> you know, Dean Barry gave us maybe about a 30 minutes heads up that we we're shutting down the building. So I only knew a little bit before you did. Uh, so that when you got the email, I had already found out 
maybe half an hour before. Um, and when I sent that email, I had time to type it up first, but I was just waiting for the dean to send it out. So I had very little notice. Um, but we'll make do as best as we can. So what I'd like to do is go through the role. And if you see me pivoting my head, I have six monitors, um, and they're everywhere. So that way I can keep everything open. Uh, but I want to go through uh, as normal as we can uh, a review from last class. Oh, uh, the attendance is on iClicker. Um, if you're on your phones and you can't access it now, that's fine. I'll leave it running after class, but please just punch in your attendance. Um, as far as we're concerned, this is your attendance. You you were here, you're present, you're watching me speak. Um, I can't be through the building, but we'll do the best we can. All right, so unfortunately, Ricardo Alexander, um, you are the first alphabetically in Troy. You're next, and then Douglas. Um, <coughs> so we'll just go down the list. <coughs> so let's see, Ricardo, do you want to unmute your microphone, please? Let's see. There you are, okay, yes. Okay, so now I'm going to pin you so everyone sees you. How's that? Okay, Ricardo. Refresh your recollection. What is a tenancy in common? How would we define that? Uh-huh. Okay, what does that actually mean, though? Okay, that's good. So, Ricardo, let me ask you a follow-up, please. <clears throat> Let's say you have A and B. They're tense in common. What happens when one of them dies? What happens if A dies, for example? Very good. Does B get anything? Okay. That's right. The key feature of the tenant in common is that there's no right of survivorship when A and B are tenants in common and A dies, A's interest goes to A. And that can get really messy. Why does it get messy? Um, it gets messy because if you have multiple heirs, they now step into the shoes of A and B has to split it with them. And that creates lots of problems. Okay, so Ricardo, I'm putting you on mute. Troy, uh, put yourself on uh, off mute, please. This will get smoother as we go along, I promise. Like, I've given some thought before. Where are you, Troy? Okay. All right. Oh, there you go. I see you. Okay. And then I'm going to pin your video so everyone sees you. All right. Troy, remind us, sir, what is a joint tenancy? Good. Oh, okay. That's very good. So the tenancy in common and the joint tenancy share, sorry, they share some features, right? With both the tenancy in common and the joint tenancy, each tenant has access to the entire property. So in that regard, they're, they're similar. But the joint tenancy differs in one very important regard. It creates what's called a survivorship right. And with the survivorship right, it's basically a race to death, right? Whoever dies first wins, or loses, I should say, right? So if, um, a and B are joint tenants, and A dies. B gets Blackacre in fee simple. The heirs get nothing, okay? So that's the key function. All right, Troy, I'm putting you on mute. All right, Doug, you wanna put yourself off mute, please? We'll find you. There you are. Okay, it's so getting quicker, very good. All right, so Doug, what are the requirements to establish a joint tenancy? What must you show? Uh-huh. Well, there, there, there are four letters. Let's just let's go back based on our notes. What are those four requirements that we talked about? It was an acronym I gave you. That's it. Good. 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 Okay, very good. Th thanks so much. All right. 
so we have uh, just uh, please look back on mute, Doug, if you can. Um, so we have this acronym T T I P. Time, title, instrument, and possession. And in order to create a joint tenancy, all four of these must be present at all times. So let's say you establish it correctly. You have the same instrument, you have the same title, you have the same possession, everything's equal. And then at some point a conveyance is made, right? Uh, Anthony, what happens, Anthony Ben at least, what happens once a conveyance is made to the joint tenancy? Here, Anthony Bennett, go once. Tony, Tony Bennett, no. All right, uh, 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 Haley, you're next. What happens if there's a conveyance to the joint tenancy? Yeah, exactly. I describe this as a game of shoots and ladders, right? Once you um, once you sever the joint tenancy, the unity dissolve. If one of them dissolves, two of them dissolve, it doesn't matter. But once you go down to a dissolved unity, you have a tenancy in common. Um, there's a common way that people try to destroy the joint tenancy is they just sell their interest to someone else. And by doing that, they're able to basically kill the survivorship rights. But we did a case last class of Chris that was a little bit different, right? In the, in the case we did yesterday from California, how do they try to um, sever the tenancy, the joint tenancy? That's right. Right, at common law, could you convey it to yourself to destroy the uh, unities? Okay, very good, thank you, thanks so much. And put yourself on mute, okay. Um, what happened in the California case we did last week um, was we actually saw an effort to sever the unities by yourself. This was a Valencia's case, right? Um, and, 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 and the, I'm sorry, Riddle v. Harmon, Valencia's today, Riddle v. Harmon. And this you're not allowed to do, okay? So the joint tenancy has these four unities that exist at all time. They can be severed. But once you sever it, you kill the survivorship, right? All right, Dylan, I think you're next. Uh, Dylan, what is the tenancy by the entirety and just take yourself off mute please Dylan Dylan once nope no Dylan okay next up is Louisa where are you Louisa nope all right uh Jayla I should probably check the attendance Jayla, you here? I see a, I see a thing for Jayla. I don't, I don't. You there, Jayla? Nope. Oh boy, in a bad stretch. Okay. Uh, Marissa. Okay. Oh, there you are. Uh, hold on. Marissa um, uh, Chapa. Okay, wh where are you? Oh, there you go. Okay, now pin your video. And you see what I'm doing, when someone's speaking, I bring their video to the front so you can actually see them and as best as possible recreate class. I have, I have the photo roster right on my other screen so I can quickly find you in the crowd because there are a lot of people. Uh, all right, Marissa, please tell us, what is the tendency by the entirety? Refresh your memory, please. Oh. Well, how does it differ from the joint tendency? What, what additional things do you have to have present? Exactly. That's exactly right. Um, with the tenancy by the entirety, it's like a joint tenancy, but it's a fifth unity. And Jayla's here. Sorry, I cannot hear or see you. Well, Jayla, if you hear me, I'm sorry. We'll we'll, we'll figure we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out later. Uh, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll get that kink out later. All right. So with the tenancy by the entirety, you have the same five, I'm oh, sorry, the same four unities plus a fifth one, okay? And sorry, Jayla, no worries about it. We'll figure out the details later. All right, next up is Cassidy. I think I, I saw you earlier. Okay. I actually asked them if I could sort these things alphabetically. I don't think that can be done, but I'll just have to just scroll through you. Okay, Cassidy, so 
Uh, the next question that I want to ask you is what is the only way to sever the tendency by the entirety? Yeah. And what happens if you're divorced? Well, we'll get to the division later, but as a general matter, what happens to the unity is when the couple gets divorced? Okay, so he, yeah, no, see, uh, th thank you, Cassie. You, I think your, your, your confusion is actually accurate. And let me, let me explain it to you this way. When you have a tendency by the entirety, in some cases when it's severed, it becomes a joint tendency because basically you have four of the five unities left. And in other cases, they may, the court may say it's a tendency in common. Um, I think the better answer is you have a joint tendency. Uh, that is, you still have the survivorship rights. Um, if the husband and wife want to get rid of that, they can, they can contract around it. But I think as a general matter, the better answer is when you sever that, you get to a joint tendency. But you'll, you'll see, I think you'll see different courts go different directions. So I don't want to give you like a single bright line rule for that one. Okay? All right. Are there any questions about the uh, review uh, joint tendency? And if you want, see the little button that says reactions? If you give me a thumbs up. That just tells me people are following along and I'm not like talking to a vacuum. If you want to give me, oh, I see lots of thumbs up. Very good. Uh, no middle fingers, no, uh, no, no poop emojis, please. Just, 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 just Lord help us. I, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a really long day. <laughs> okay. All right, Cassidy, you can put yourself uh, on mute, please. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So we're going to move on to, uh, <laughs> we can laugh a little bit. We, okay. So we're going to move uh, on to a, uh, uh, a new topic today, and that concerns the relations among concurrent owners. And this is probably something that you can relate to more than any other topic this semester. Um, many of you have had roommates. If not, you've had maybe brothers or sisters who you've shared a room with. And you can imagine at various points, uh, conflicts arise between the tenants, right? Now, if it's a roommate and you don't like your roommate, okay, no big deal. You know, your lease is over in a year, you move out, or maybe you find a sublease or you get you move out, right? You can deal with it. Um, with a brother and sister, you can't get rid of them so easily. But with a tenant, it's not a short-term arrangement. It's kind of permanent. And that for the foreseeable future, both of you will be unable to deal with each other. Right, you have to live with each other. So there's some basic rules, right? There are some basic rules about how to uh, 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 cohabitate with a tenant in common or a joint tenant. So the first one is that each tenant has an equal interest in all the land, right? They have an equal right to possession of the whole. Um, one tenant cannot exclude the other tenant. So if you imagine you draw a line down the middle and say, this is my side, this is your side, that's not going to work. Um, one tenant cannot charge rent to the other tenant, right? The entire purpose of the co-tenancy is they have an equal right to be there and they cannot charge rent. But there's a, there's a basic problem here, right? If I do something on my land that you don't like, I'm harming you. Or if you do something on the land that I don't like, you're harming me. It's virtually impossible for two people to live together on a piece of land and not bother each other, right? Even people who like each other very much annoy each other every now and then. So the courts have developed some ways to deal with these issues. Now, the best way to deal with these issues, of course, is voluntary agreements. If the parties agree to sever the unity, they can do that. If the party agrees that one tenant buys out the other tenant, they can do that. If the parties agree to put up the lot for sale, they can do that also. But the disputes arise when they can't come to an agreement because maybe one tenant wants to stay and the other tenant wants to leave. At that point, the tenants are obligated to go to court and they're gonna to have to ask a court to resolve these issues. Um, now courts sit in this context in what's known as equity, where courts try to do fairness. 
And then the key question becomes, fair to whom? One tenant wants the courts to intervene, and the other tenant doesn't. So there are two major kinds of, um, there are two major kinds of reactions a court can do. There are what's called partitions. And a partition is a split, right? The partition means to divide. And there are two types of divides. The first divide is what's known as a partition in kind, K-I-N-D, partition in kind. Um, a partition in kind is when you literally split up the lot. Let's say Black Acre is 100 acres. You give 50 acres to person number one and 50 acres to person number two, right? With a partition in kind, you're actually making two separate plots of land that can then be sold freely. The second kind of partition is what's known as partition by sale, or partition by sale. Um, the partition by sale is more useful when you can't easily divide the land down the middle, right? Let's say it's a very rocky patch of land. Uh, one part is near the main road, the other part is not near the road. It wouldn't make much sense to landlock the back half. So in some cases, the courts order partition by sale. In that case, you sell the lot, and then you divide it up. So if there are two joint tenants, person A gets 50% of their proceeds, and person B gets 50% of the proceeds. Now, the courts don't like partitions by sale or partitions in kind. Uh, Heather, why do the courts not like partitions by sale or partitions by kind? Here, Heather? Heather, going once, going twice. All right, next up, uh, Allison. You hear Allison? Yes, okay. Allison, why do courts not like partitions by kind? That's your, oh wow, you're really dark in there. I can barely see you. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's okay, the contrast is off. Uh, that's right. With a partition in kind, you are altering the nature of the land. So let's say that there's some water on part of the land and not on the other. When you slice it in half, only one of them is keeping access to the resource. Um, when you do a partition by sale, people are kicked off the land altogether. So Allison, what, what happens to any sort of survivorship rights when you have a, when you have a partition? What happens to those? Yeah, you lose them as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Allison. And I see Heather said she's here, but you can't hear me. So I, I've noticed that there are a bunch of people I'm gonna show you on the screen. Uh, uh, the, see the little box here for Heather? There's a little uh, red slash the microphone. I don't think your audio is activated. And I think um, uh, Jayla had it before. Maybe hers is working now. Oh, I see. Oh, there you are. Uh, so if you can figure out when you join, it says join with computer audio. You can select that. Um, so just, I'm not gonna be mad today because we're still working at the kinks, but uh, we'll probably be doing this for the foreseeable future. So let's just figure out our audio. But so far, so good. Okay. Oh, Jayla, can I call on you next? Okay, here, let's, let's, let's call on you next. All right. All right, so let's start the first case, please. Um, uh, Delfino versus uh, Valencius, 1980, Connecticut. Uh, you wanna give me the facts here, please? Yeah, well, it, it, it wasn't a garbage dump. Let me just be, let me be nice to them, right? It's where they hauled garbage, so they just used it to transport. It wasn't actually like, they didn't like, it wasn't a landfill, All right? But go on, please. Right. Okay. 
l let me just let me just let me just stop you there if I can, right? What kind of fractions are those? Have you ever seen numbers like that? Isn't that weird? Yeah, it didn't make much sense to me, but that's just the way that it was broken. Yeah, I mean, this is a really weird number. Let me just let me give you these numbers again, right? Angelo and William had 99 over 144. And Helen had 45 over 144. These are these are weird numbers. And if I had to guess, you know, I don't really know, but if I had to guess, these were inherited, right? So maybe you started off like, you know, two, two thirds, one third, but then they got chopped up and divided. Now, even though, let's just make it easy. Let's say it's a 150, right? So let's make it two thirds, one third, just make it easier. Jayla, does the fact that there's a two third, one third split mean that they can exclude each other from part of the land? No. Okay, that's exactly right. So you're in this weird situation, right, where uh, uh, the plaintiffs aren't so happy about how Helen, uh, the defendant, is using the land because uh, you're using some sort of rubbish and garbage removal business, all right? Okay, so thank you, Jayla. I'll put you on, on mute. And next up is Catherine. Are you here, Catherine? Catherine? Catherine going once, going twice. All right. Uh, Dana. Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can, well, I see, I see a disembodied face, but uh, we'll hear. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm not feeling great. <laughs> okay, that, 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 that's all right. All right, well, we'll you'll have to look at me, unfortunately. Okay, okay. But you, you'll, look, you'll, you'll look at me instead. Okay, so Dana, let me, let me ask you a question. I, ho I ho hope you do feel better. Um, were the parties able to reach any sort of agreement on how to resolve this, this sort of dispute? Um, so they brought an action and asking the court for a patrician by sale. Uh huh. But I don't. Oh, then they moved for a patrician. Well, well, kind well, well, we'll get we'll get the petition stuff in a minute. But my my first question was, were they able to work at any sort of deal amicably, like without going to the courts? Um, no, not amicably. They had to reach out to the court and help them. Okay. Okay. So now, now, sort of, what would what did the defendant want and what did the plaintiff want? They want different things. So, um, the plaintiff brought the action seeking a patrician of the property by sale. Good. And the defendant moved for a patrician in kind. Okay, so Dana, one more question. Why do you think the plaintiff wanted a petition in sale and the defendant wanted a petition in kind? Why do you think they chose the different remedies? Mm, probably because one wants money and the other one doesn't. No, that's, exa that, that, that's exactly right. The plaintiffs had no use for the land as a rubbish business. They, they had no use for it. Their livelihood did not depend on it. So the plaintiffs wanted to sell it and get cash, right? Ms. Valencius, she had her business. This was her livelihood. It was her job. This is what she did for a living. And she wanted to keep it for her business, right? So you have this conflict, right? The plaintiffs want the petition by sale. And the and defendant wants petition by kind, all right? Uh, I think, uh, Julissa, you're next. And, and just add Dana, put stuff on mute. Okay, and Julissa? Hi, can you hear me? I can, all right. So Julissa, let me ask you this question. What did the trial court do in this case? Um, so they ordered a petition by sale. Okay, why? Um, because that um, they didn't want to put the garbage, like if you were to make, do with the defense, uh, what the plaintiff wanted and have residential housing, they probably wouldn't want it near a garbage lot. No, that's exactly right. And I think what the court basically said was, a petition by, I'm sorry, a petition in kind is not practicable here, right? right? To think of the best interest of all the parties, if you slice it in half, you're gonna make someone live next to a garbage hauling business. Uh, you might think of the coming to the nuisance case, the Del Webb uh, Spur Lot case, right? We basically are forcing people to live next to a garbage business. Um, the, the trial court also suggested that the planning commission might actually block the development of the uh, 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 housing next to the garbage uh, lot. Uh, so the trial court ruled for the petition by sale. Okay. Uh, thank you, Julissa. Put yourself on, on mute, please. Uh, I think, Ashley, you're next. Yeah, here loud and clear. Okay, so awesome. far so good. So, Ashley, what did the court do on appeal? Um, 
they decided to um, do the, uh, they like compared the two um, and decided that a partition and kind of be more appropriate. Okay, why would, why did the Court of Appeals think the partition in kind uh, was more appropriate? Um, well, they, like you said, they looked at the interests of all the tenants. They also said that there was no suggestion um, that the statute would bar anything about the subdivision. That's right. Um, the statute at issue is actually almost 300 years old from the 1700s. So we're talking about a very um, old statute. But it suggests that partitions by sale are disfavored. And I want you to think about it this way. When we're talking about a partition um, by sale, that means that no one gets to live there anymore, right? That means it gets sold entirely. And Ms. Valencius' livelihood is killed. Whereas with a partition in kind, in theory at least, Valencius can stay there and run her business. And I think this is probably the right approach. Courts generally do not favor the sale if there's some sort of really serious conflict between the parties, they, they favor the partition in kind, okay? And the court says you must consider the interests of all the co-tenants, not just the economic gain of one of the tenants. The defendant, Ms. Valencia, lives in the land. She draws her livelihood from the business. Her family relies on it. And we're not going to go down the road of making her shut down her business. Um, here, there actually was fairly, it was fairly easy to um, uh, uh, do the partition by, um, I'm sorry, the partition by, uh, uh, what do you call it, by um, uh, 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 in kind. Let me, let me, I was distracted from the screen share. Um, uh, let me show you the picture from the book. Can everyone see that, I think? Yeah, good, I see nodding. So if you look over here, on oh, my many monitors, uh, her garbage business was this green pentagon on the side. And this was an instance where it was actually fairly easy to section it off. Uh, but one of the problems is the road sort of went down the middle and she was sort of landlocked. And we'll get to that point later. Okay, stop share, back to me. Okay. So here the court orders partition in kind. Okay. Um, are there any questions about the Valencius case? And you can do it by chat or raising your hand or, 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 or any other function. You're working better than I expected. So far, so good. Okay, anyone? No? All right. And you do know there's, there's the raise hand feature if you need it, but uh, I think you'll, uh, you'll, you'll be able to. All right, now uh, I called an Ashley. Uh, Sarah, you hear Sarah? All right, I yeah. see you. Okay, I see you. So Sarah, what happened after the case. Did this all work out well for Ms. Valencius? Did she actually make out okay? Um, I don't know. They, I don't think they got into that, though. Well, do you, how do you think she made out? Do you think this actually worked out well for her? Um, well, I mean, if they, I guess so. It should have. Well, let me ask you a question, right? Do you think there was any problem with Ms. Valencia's running this garbage business right next to where people are going to be living after the sale? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so you think maybe it didn't work out so good? Yeah. 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 No, that, 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 that that's right. Um, the aftermath wasn't so good for Ms. Valencia's. She got, I think she got screwed. Um, she was given uh, the land, but she had to pay money to compensate for running her garbage business. This is kind of like the coming to the nuisance doctrine, right? We basically have to pay to inflict a nuisance on others. Um, eventually, she got as much land as she needed, uh, but she was having problems getting over the land because uh, she couldn't get access to the main road. So she had to pay for an easement, which was also quite expensive. Um, but eventually, she kept running her business. Okay. All right. Um, the modern trend, if you want to call it the modern trend, is towards partition by sale. So I think the, the Connecticut decision is more of the common law rule, which I think is probably the, the more established rule, but you will see in more recent courts um, engaging in sale. Uh, there are two note cases after the book, uh, one Ark Land versus Harper from West Virginia. Uh, we had this huge 75 acre lot that was owned by a family for almost a century. And here the court order petition in kind, and they said money can't compensate for sentimental value. Um, the, this other case, Johnson versus Hendrickson, 
uh, where you had this uh, estate that passed to a widow and several kids, and the kids wanted a partition by uh, uh, a partition by sale, um, and that's what the uh, that's what the court ordered. All right. All right. All right. Any questions so far in Valencius? All right, take a look at your books. Hopefully you all have your books with you. Uh, page 614, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, page 414, problem six. I'm sorry, page 414, problem six. Let's see if I can do the screen share effectively. I promise this will get faster. They give us basically zero training on this. So I'm using it for the first time today. Okay, share. All right, so uh, next up is Anthony. Can you hear Anthony? Anthony? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, Anthony, why don't you just read uh, uh, letter A, please, which is A and B. A and B are heirs of their father, who owned one item, both A and B very much one, his old rocking chair. They cannot agree who is to have the chair. A brings a partition action, or it relief should the court award. All right. What do you think the court does here? I mean, this is almost a, it's almost a bizarre case, but... If you were the judge, how would you award this one? Uh, if they couldn't agree, then just sell it and make them split the proceeds. Now, Anthony, how much do you think an old sentimental rocking chair will actually bring? Oh, not much. So do you think anyone wants a petition by sale here? No. So what do you think the court does here? Just be, get creative. Um... Well, if it's sentimental value, then cut it in half and let each one have a piece. Cut the rocking chair in half? Who wants a broken rocking chair? What are you going to do with that? Well, <laughs> they can't agree. That's the only option. Remember, me- remember King Solomon? Yeah. Yeah, in the Bible? He threatened to cut the baby in half, right? Did he actually cut it in half? No, one of them gave it up. Yeah, the one, the one who wanted it more, who actually cared more, gave it up. All right. Let's see, uh, David. I think you're next. You here, David. Uh, you're out. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So, David, let me ask you a question. How would you resolve this dispute? Um, well, if there's no market value and it's only sentimental value, maybe there could be uh, like maybe like a sort of dual usage to Ooh. that. Um, How so? A rocking chair where. Maybe they could figure out a way where they could both benefit out of the seats. How? Uh, what would that look like? Know, they could switch. Oh. Switch ownership of it. Like joint custody of a kid? Right, yeah. That's exactly right. In this case, the court said is that A gets it for six months out of the year, B gets it for six months out of the year, and they keep repeating this every year until, until when, David? Until one party dies. Yep. And the survivor gets the chair permanently. And I think that's absolutely the correct response. I think that's actually the Stanley Cup, exactly like the Stanley Cup. You you effectively rotate it every six months and eventually someone gets to keep it. I hope we have a Stanley Cup one again. We no more hockey, no more basketball, no more no more sports, but uh, at least you get the reference. All right, uh, any questions on that one on, on, on problem six? Okay, um, let's move to the next case. Um, so far we've talked about um, partitions when the parties agree that they're no longer able to um, uh, uh, oh, Chance raised his I raised my hand, I'm sorry Chance, okay, I'm going to call on you now, Chance you have a question of course, stop it, be nice be nice be nice I thought it was just to try that feature out okay Chance, okay, I'm, I'm calling on you, yes, do you have a question? everybody's laughing um be nice. Why would we want to rotate stuff and have the court involved instead of just cutting it in half and saying, look, we're not worried about happiness. We're worried about fairness. Well, yeah, you may, you may cut the chair in half and neither party's happy. But now from a judicial efficiency standpoint, wouldn't you want the court out of there quicker? Well, you have to monitor it, right? So you have to actually make sure that people are sharing the chair every six months. Um, but that's I, my point. But I, you, don't, you have to monitor that. That's just more cost and time. And if we, if you, there's a more source of issue, why would we want to get out of that okay. process as possible? Let, let, and just cut that thing down the middle. Let me let me answer uh, your question, and then then I will uh, uh, discuss how to raise your hand because people are asking how do you raise a hand. 
Um, equity is designed to make people as happy as reasonably possible, right? Chance, would anyone be happy if you had a slice of a chair in half that you can't rock? No one would be happy. But so I so this, this, is a, right, this is a court of law and not so much a court of equity. I'm sorry, this is a court of equity, not a court of law, and they're driven by equity. So I don't think a court of law could do what you're suggesting, but I see your point. Now, Chance, you want to tell your classmates how to click the raise hand feature so everyone knows how you just did that? So I have it set up in the gallery chat deal where I have like six, like 36 screens all at once because yeah. it feels weird just looking at one person. Yeah. On my right-hand side, I have like the participant list, which I think we put our last names first next time. Please do that. I would actually alphabetize it. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you can all put your last name first. Uh, uh, when you sign in, so like just uh, Blackman, comma Josh, that will make my life easier. And but you, where do you see the raise hand feature? So the raise hand feature is on the view of participants. Participants, and it says mute me and then raise hand. That's okay. where I hit it. But did you get like a notification when I hit raise hand? I did. Yeah. If it, 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 the problem is it flags it, but there's seven view, seventy, so there's no easy way for me to see it. So if you just put a chat, also I'll I'll probably get to it quicker. Because I, I have a long list of names, and this is not uh, easy, but we're making do. All right. Uh, does anyone else have a question, whether raise your hand or otherwise? I'll put you on mute, Chance. Uh, yesterday, during the faculty, <laughs> we had this crash course on how to use Zoom, and one of my colleagues actually said, um, is there any way to mute students in real life? <laughs> uh, so the short answer is no, but I can do it here. <laughs> Very rude, I know. Um, Anyway, uh, any any questions at the moment? For a moment to the next case. All right, uh, I did. Uh, uh, Caitlin, Caitlin, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. You may hear my dog snoring in the background. So that's sorry. Th that's that's right. Look, we, we are all um, well, we're, we're we're all friends here. Okay, uh, you want to give me the facts, please, in um, uh, Spiller versus Macrith, Alabama, 1976. Hold on. Yeah. Blake, Blake has a question. Where's Blake? Blake, you there? I'll just put you, Caitlin, just hang out for a second. Blake, you have a question? Yeah, it was back on the raise his hand feature, and this is a Zoom question. Is there a difference running Zoom online through the web browser versus actually downloading it that I may have missed? I don't think so. Uh, I have the oh, app. Okay. It, it took me, it, I'm trying to find you, Blake. Yeah, le next class, everyone go in alphabetical order by last name. That'll make my life easier. Uh, I can't. Uh, where are you? Uh, I can't find you. But yeah, Blake, wherever you are in the, in the abyss. Um, Let's figure it out later. Yeah, and if, if you can run it on your laptop rather than your phone, that's better. That way you're not holding your phone for two hours and actually like, you know, type and take notes like you're supposed to in class. I'm on my laptop. I just opened a web browser, but I'm not seeing emojis. I'm not seeing hands, but I can, I can research that on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, sometimes when you go to Zoom, it might ask you to create an account. Don't pay for it. You don't have to pay for anything. Uh, the South Texas one pays for everything. Oh, also Langdell's. I asked at this crash course if the Langdell's will be done by Zoom. I think the answer is yes. So I think uh, uh, Austin will at some point get um, a Langdell for you all. I, I, I don't know exactly uh, uh, when, but I think that'll, that'll happen. Okay. All right. Th th thank you, Blake. All right. Uh, Caitlin, back to you. Sorry to unceremoniously duck away. Okay, so do you want to give us, please, the facts and Spiller? Okay, so um, the plaintiff and defendant, they owned a building together in Tuscaloosa um, as tenants in common. Right. And um, one of their leases vacated the building once their rent, once their rent period was over. Right. And then the plaintiff entered into the building and began using it as a warehouse. And so his partner, Macklerith, um, wrote him a letter and demanded that either he vacate the building or pay him rent for that portion that he was using. Okay, so, so Kate, let's just understand this, right? For, for some time, there was a tenant in the building, right? There was someone actually paying rent. What do you think happened after that rent stopped? What do you think happened to the other, uh, uh, to, the, to the tenants? Why do you think they were kind of annoyed? Probably because they weren't getting rent money. Yeah, they, they want the money. They were expecting the money and they wanted to keep getting it. But that rent was cut out. So excuse me, one of the tenants had a great idea. And he said, aha, I have an idea. I'll put this land to beneficial use, right? I will 
make it into my own warehouse. I'll store my own stuff there, right? Uh, Farron, you there? Hear Farron? Nope, no Farron. Next up is uh, Alan. I saw you earlier. There you are. Okay. So, Alan, what happens um, after the first guy brings all of his like inventory and makes it into a warehouse? Uh, then the Mac Macaroth, yeah. they send them a letter yeah. asking them to either vacate the premises or yeah. pay, pay the half of the rent. Right. So, Alan, let me ask you a follow-up question, please. Um, if, if Spiller is keeping all of his crap there, can they rent it out? someone else no no and that's the problem right once one of the co-tenant sites actually literally fill the building with this stuff it becomes impossible to rent and therefore you can't generate rent from someone else so so alan what did the other tenant do because you can't get rent from a third party who do you ask for rent from from the other co-tenant exactly right um now i'll tell you when you have a tenancy in common or joint tenancy. One tenant cannot request rent from another tenant. That is not permissible. You cannot do that, right? The very basic idea of tenancy is that they cannot charge rent to one another. They each have equal access to the entire property. But there's a, but there's a difficulty here. Uh, Thomas, you here? Hey, I'm here. Okay, thanks, Thomas. Um, so, Thomas, what's the... What's the difficulty though? Is it possible for both tenants to have full access to the entire property? Is that, is that even possible? Right? Um, is even like. Not without, no. Not without getting each other's way. That's exactly right. Isn't it always going to happen that tenant A will get in the way of tenant B? Yeah, unless they have an agreement. Right. You know, maybe this is an extreme example because of like they have a warehouse, but you're going to bump into someone else, right? So as a general matter, uh, you are conflicting one to the next. All right, so next up is uh, Stuart, you here? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so, uh, okay Stuart, where are you? Uh, we'll get quicker at this. If you're alphabetized, just, oh, there you go, okay. Yeah, next class, just put your last name comma first and I can quickly sort through you all because right now you're randomly sorted. All right, so Stuart, what does the, um, what does the, 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 the court do here? How do they um, how do they resolve this conflict between the two parties? Um, the court said when one tenant puts things in a room, the other can't request the rent. This does not make the plan of an ouster. Ah, okay. So that's what I was looking for. Stuart, what is this word which you may have seen before? Ouster. What does that word mean? Person who disallows people from being on their property. Well, the court has a, a little bit of a difficult time defining ouster. What are some of the definitions they give us to define ouster? Um, someone keeps others off the property line. That's the line they give you. Uh, Allison, you here? Um, I am. Okay. But I accidentally answered for Allison Darwin earlier. Oh. This is Allison Heiner. Sorry. Oh, you were so eager. You were so eager. Well, the one who didn't answer, you're up now. That would be Allison Darwin. Allison Darwin, you here? Oh, saved. Uh, not here, Allison Darwin. Okay. Uh, I think Juice, are you here? You're here. I saw you earlier. Yes, I'm here. So, so yeah, I hear you. I see you loud and clear. So, Juitza, let me ask you this question again. How does the court give different senses of what ouster is? Well, they said that it's a conclusory word which is used loosely in kind of right. to describe two distinct fact situations. Good. Okay. So, yeah, give, give me at least one of the definitions they give, please. So, the beginning of the running of the statute of limitations for adverse possession. Okay, let me stop you there. Um, you haven't learned adverse possession. I think, I think Chance asked me at last class, I said, don't worry about it. I'll say the same thing again today. You will do uh, adverse possession in property too. God willing, we're all here next semester. But you will, you will do adverse possession in property too, okay? Um, 
adverse possession is basically squatting, right? Let's say you have a piece of land, black acre, and I start living on your land. I'm there for 10 years and you don't kick me off, but you know I'm there. Black acre becomes mine. Uh, so what happens if you have two joint tenants and one of them says, you know what? I'm occupying this entirety of black acre. I'm occupying the entirety of the land. If I occupy for 10 years and you don't kick me out, it becomes mine. So one way to define ouster is when that 10 year clock, what's known as a statute of limitation, starts tick, 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 starts running. Um, but that's not the sense of ouster we're talking about here. Here we're simply talking about any sort of liability uh, uh, that one tenant uh, seeks to make the other one pay rent, right? We don't have complete ouster here. We merely have a request to pay rent, okay? Now, uh, 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 Genevieve, are you here? Genevieve? Okay, next. Uh, Tim. Yes. I see you're in San Francisco. Very, very dangerous place to be right now, actually. Uh, uh, I'm glad you're all by yourself up there. Um, so, Tim, let me ask you this question. Here, was there any effort to actually physically oust Spiller? I think they just turned down the pay. And Did they put a lock on the door? Um, no. no. Was there any effort to yeah. physically lock? Well, oh. there was a lock. Um, but what does the court say about the lock? Um, I think they said um, it wasn't evidence of excluding. Well, well, Tim, let me ask you a question. Is it safe to have a warehouse with a lock on the door? No. So, yeah, right, you still have to like, lock it up. Yeah, you have to lock up, protect the merchandise. Was there any evidence that there was a request to get a key to the lock? Um, I think since they said it wasn't evidence of excluding, I don't think he actually asked. Yeah, right. So he never, thank you, Tim, he never actually asked for the key, right? There was never actually any request for the key at all, right? So the court here finds that there was no ouster, and therefore the award of rent was not proper. Um, and there's some notes after the case. Um, I think the majority rule um, is generally you have to have something physical or you have to kick someone out. It's not enough to just ask for money. You have to actually make a physical threat. Okay? All right. Any questions on the second case? <clears throat> I'll scroll through to see if any hands are being raised. Anyone? Uh, can you give us an overall definition of ouster? Um, right. <clears throat> the court explains that ouster has two general definitions, right? One of the definitions means you kick someone out for purposes of squatting, what's called address possession. And I don't want you to get hung up on that definition. Um, but more generally, in our, in our class at least, Alice refers to some sort of physical step you take to ensure that one tenant can't access the other. So an example could be um, putting a lock on the door and refusing to give a key to the other tenant, right? That would be an example of an ouster. Um, there's no black letter definition. It's very context specific. Um, does that address some of your questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else on this case, on the uh, Alabama case? No? All right. Um, does ouster apply to joint tenants, Naveen asks? Yes, it does. Um, and indeed, if, if one joint tenant outs the other, the joint tenancy actually becomes a tenancy in common. Okay? But to be frank, if you oust, to be precise, you have no tenancy at all. And once you have the ouster, the court can actually order a petition by sale or kind. Um, because if you deny access from one to the other, you, you've effectively abolished the purpose of the joint tenancy or a tenancy in common. Okay? Okay. 
Other questions? Okay. Uh, Samia, are you here? Yes. All right, let's go on to the last case. Uh, the California case. And before I get started, I've, I've mentioned this point many times before. Um, when you have a California case, they are about to reverse the common law, or at least they're going to ignore the common law. I told you this is a good rule of thumb. Uh, I think it applies in almost every context that you are going to see. Where are you? I don't see you. I'll, I'll find you in a second. All right. Samia, do you want to give me the facts in the last case, um, Swartzbaugh? Uh, versus Samson, California, 1936. Okay, so it was a husband and wife, and they owned a property as joint tenants. And then um, the wife basically sued the husband who leased a portion of their property to another uh, person named Samson, who was also a defendant in the case. Good. He built a boxing pavilion on the property, and so she sued both of them to cancel the leases, the leases governing the land. Good. So let me let me just pause you for a second, right? Um, Swartzbaugh, Mr. and Mrs. are husband and wife, right? Is this, Samia, is this a joint tenancy or a tenancy by the entirety? You want to say tenancy by the entirety, don't you? Joint. Is there anything in the case that says it's tenancy by the entirety? Right, and let me let me. You know, you're exactly right. And let me let me give you a preview. Um, we're dealing here with a California case, right? And in California, we have what's called community property. And you're going to hate me next week, God, when we get there. But the rules for tenancy by the entirety in community property states are very different. And you can't treat tenancy by the entirety the same way in California, Texas, where we all, I hope, live for foreseeable future, uh, is a community property state. And so the rules for tenancy by the entirety are different. This is just a joint tenancy, and we'll treat it in that fashion. All right, so what happens? You have a husband and wife. They own a walnut farm in Orange County, California. Um, and then Samson shows up, and Samson's a boxing promoter. He wants to lease a small part of the land uh, to build a boxing facility. Shocker, shocker, husband wants it. Wife doesn't. So then the husband quietly executes two leases to Samson for very low rent. And the wife refuses to join the lease. And then the uh, uh, boxing guy, Samson, actually chops on trees and he builds his boxing pavilion. The wife is sick in bed and she did not receive any of the money. And Samson has exclusive possession. Right? So, uh, uh, Chelsea, are you here? Chelsea, going once? Nope. All right. Uh, Chelsea's next. Uh, Mandy. I'm here. Can you hear me? Are you in, are you in, are you in a beach somewhere? Yeah. Is this, is this a corona vacation? <laughs> Definitely. So please tell me this isn't true. The dean said that there are some students at schools who are taking advantage of the cheap airfare to go on spring break. Please don't. I hope... Use virtual beaches. They're very nice. All right. All right. So um, let me ask you a question, Mandy. So if I told you as a general matter, right, as a general matter, that you had joint tenants and one of them leased out land and allowed a box room to be built, would you think that severs the unities? Just as a, forget this case, Raymond, just as a general matter. Um, no. Why not? Well, no, if they give you money for it, I guess. Well, they give who money for it? Who actually was given the money in this case? Like if, if they were give, given money to rent out the space and then they shared the money with the other joint tenant. Right, but did the other joint tenant want it? Would they want the money? No, would they even the, want the, the, uh, having, having a tenant? Oh, uh, well... Mandy, let me ask you the question differently. What are the four requirements for a joint tenancy. What's that acronym we started class off with? TTIP? Yeah, TTIP. What are those, what are the four? Run, run through them, please. Sure, so it's time, and then, I'm gonna the second T. Um, 
Time, title. Title, uh, entrance. And what's P? Possession. Possession. When you build a boxing ring on part of Black Acre, do both tenants have full possession of the entire lot? No. No. Right. Thank you, Mandy. So this is a weird case, right? If you had just paid attention to what I've been telling you the last two classes, which I hope, hope you've done, um, you would think that this is an easy case, right? Well, I see a puppy. I see a puppy. It's very cute. It's fine. All right. Um, if you were to just pay attention to um, what I said before, you would think that having one of the tenants lease out to create a boxing ring was sufficient to create a joint, I'm sorry, was sufficient to sever the unities. Uh, but the court doesn't follow that rule here, right? Uh, Moises, I think you're next. You hear Moises? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much. Why does the court here think, Moises, that um, the unities were not severed? They weren't severed, or that they were. No, I'm sorry. That, that that they were not severed. That the that the that the joint tenancy can remain. What was the court hold um, here? Let's see. The court said that if one gives a lease, it's as if they both give the lease. Right, but why? Why is it that the wife had no role in this? Why did the unities remain? Because it's unified, it's together. Well, Moises, let me ask the question differently. When the husband executed the lease, what exactly was he giving to the boxing promoter? What, what exactly was he giving away? I guess permission to be on the land. But what interest was he giving? That's my question, it's more precise. I'm not really sure. Alexandra, you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, so let me ask you the same question I gave to Moises a minute ago. What precise interest was the husband giving to the boxing promoter? Possession. Of what? Possession, use of the land. I won't be more, I won't be more precise here, right? So, uh, uh, Lexi, right? Is what you say in the name tag? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, so, uh, Alexi, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you this question again. When you have two joint tenants, how would you describe their interests? Undivided. But they each have their own interests, don't they? Right. So what does the California court hold here? When the husband executed the lease by himself, what actual interest was he giving to the tenant? Yeah. It's a very subtle point. The court sort of makes us a little confusing. We want to make this one clear. What exactly was he giving to was the tenant? Title? No, 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 no. Nick? You hear Nick? Nick, you hear? Yes, What was he actually giving? What interest was the husband giving? He was giving a partial possession. Right. He possessed. Yes. Whose interest was that? Nick? Um, it was his portion of yes. the joint interest. Exactly right. Just say it one more time so everyone hears you okay. I can't find you. Uh, yeah, um, I'm struggling. Was, You're here somewhere. So he, what it basically says is that um, he was giving an equal share of the joint property. So it's basically the share that he possessed of the joint tenancy is what he is able to actually give out. <clears throat> That's exactly right. The court basically says with the joint tenancy, there are separate interests. And the husband leased his interest to the boxing promoter. And that was fine. And he only gave his interest. And because he only gave his interest, the joint tenancy survived. And because the joint tenancy survived, Nick, was the survivorship rights in place? Exactly. The survivorship rights remain in place precisely because the joint tenancy survives. 
All right. All right. So thank you, Nick. So let me let me let me spend more time. And I see a question on the chat. Uh, yeah, I'll post this. I'll post this on YouTube, but let me just explain what I'm going to do. What you're all looking at, I'm not going to put on YouTube. And the reason why is I don't want all of your faces on YouTube. It's just, it's not a good idea. So I have my camera right behind, so it's just recording me, a uh, uh, disembodied voice, right? So you'll hear, hear me, and you'll hear your voices, but you won't see your faces. I don't want your face on YouTube. The school will post this, the stuff you're watching on the streaming server. I don't know when, but it'll be there. But at least YouTube will be there in a few minutes. You can at least watch most of it. Uh, with one caveat, I, if you notice I took my earphones out, I realize with my earphones in, I'm not recording all of you, so it makes no freaking sense. So I took my earphones out, and so the YouTube will now have your, your voices, just like in class. All right, we'll, 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 we'll make do. All right, so Douglas asked, he just assumed the interest of the husband. That's right. The Bakken promoter had a leasehold to the husband's interest to last for one year, two years, whatever it happens to be. It's not going to be indefinite. Okay? All right, thanks, Nick. Um, questions on that. It's a very subtle point. The court seems to suggest that the lease doesn't violate the uh, uh, joint tenancy because you're keeping each interest separate. And indeed, the court suggests that one party could mortgage, right? One party could mortgage a property if they needed to. Sort of a weird holding. All right. Um, questions then on uh, a Swartz by Samson. Now, it's kind of a weird thing where these husbands and wives in California keep going to court, right? It, it, it's very messy. And ultimately, in this case, it turns out the wife kind of, you know, had a second thought. It's just, all right, that's fine. Yeah, I'll, let me just give me part of the rent. Okay, so at that point, Samson had to pay the wife part of the rent. Um, and today, this is currently where the um, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim play uh, at their home stadium. All right. Uh, question from Chris. How could the husband lease his right possession and still be considered unified with wife possession sufficient? Right. So, so, so Chris's question is a good one, right? If we say that a joint tenancy has, has these unified interests, how can the court chop them up? Um, and the short answer is California, right? They shouldn't be. Uh, if this was a case governed by the common law, the act of giving the lease, I think at least, would sever the unities and reduce this to a joint tenant, I'm sorry, tenancy in common. Uh, but I tell you, California, they consistently you know, adjust the common law, tweak it, reverse it. So we're in a place where they're not following the right rules. That, that's a short answer to your question. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I'll wrap up in a minute. All right. Um, what else could the wife have done to end the lease? And that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. The wife was basically screwed, right? The wife, I think, would have had to claim that she was ousted, right? The fact that the boxing rank was built there and that her trees were chopped down, I think would mean that she doesn't have access to it. And perhaps you can claim an ouster, but the courts don't like finding ouster. So really, when you have a joint tenant and you have these sorts of disputes, the courts don't like getting involved. Um, they could have maybe done a partition in kind to just chop off that part of the land uh, and let it, let it be run by the boxing. That might have been another thing the wife could have done. But you can imagine husbands and wives don't want to go to court. This is not something they like to do. And here they sent, they especially made up afterwards. Other questions? All right. Let me wrap up a bit. I see thumbs up. Thank you, Jenny. Um, uh, should we consider California's law as modern law for exam purposes? That's Alan's question. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good example, right? Uh, if I say you're in a modern jurisdiction, um, keep in mind all the California cases. Uh, keep in mind all the New Jersey cases. Uh, I might ask you an exam question and say, you're in California, right? You're in California. Um, and that, that's where I start. All right. All right. All right. Let me wrap up. By the way, I think Madison's next. So just next class, uh, we'll start with Madison. But let me, let me wrap up um, uh, uh, a, a little bit. Uh, when we talk about the, the tendencies, you have tendency in common, uh, joint tenancies and tenancy by the entirety. Uh, we talk first by creating them. You have to have the four unities or five unities. Uh, this class is how to break them apart. So you have the partitions in kind and partitions uh, uh, by sale. Those are the two primary ways. Courts historically did not like ordering sales. They preferred kind, uh, but the modern trend is towards sales. Um, even though you have two people on the plot of land, courts don't like finding ouster. 
Um, because with ouster, you're basically having to say one block the other, and that's pretty rare. Um, at least in California, the modern jurisdiction, um, it seems at least that one tenant can lease out to the other tenant without any issues. Okay. All right, uh, to be on the same page, we'll be having Zoom class the week of the 23rd. Um, my friends, the answer is yes. Uh, I don't know when this ends, uh, none of us know. Uh, if anyone saw the movie Ready Player One, anyone see that movie? It, right, the, the premise of this movie is like the entire world has become antisocial, right? And they're all just communicating in this virtual form. Well, here you all are, right? <laughs> right, I mean, uh, 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 no, size and permutator, yeah. It's been, a, it's been a weird semester. Um, I don't know how long this lasts. Um, my guess is at least the end of the semester. Uh, I don't know, but that's my guess. Um, don't ask me at exams. I don't know yet. I have some thoughts of how to do it, but don't ask me. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we have faculty meetings throughout the week on this issue. Um, the school gave us basically no notice of this. This kind of popped up nowhere. I thought it would happen. I, I think I hinted at it in class on Tuesday, just so like, this is probably coming. Uh, but we didn't know. Um, my son's favorite movie. Yes, it's, it's a good movie. Um, they are probably going to close the campus. Uh, someone's asking about that. Uh, the campus is still open. Uh, you're not allowed to meet in classes, but they're probably going to close the building at some point. Um, it's expensive to keep open if there's no one there, and so you know they're probably going to shut it down. Um, this was fairly productive. I think I, I think you all did okay. Um, uh, I think the alphabetical recitation actually keeps you all active more so than me lecturing for 90 minutes. Um, I don't know how your other professors have done it. Have you had this yet in other classes? Was your earlier class canceled? I'm just seeing all the heads nod. Yeah. Okay, well, hopefully this one worked well. Um, uh, if you email me uh, and you have any other questions, I can reactivate this link. Uh, the link I gave you is going to be the same link every time. So if you want to do a virtual office hour later, I think I can pull that off. I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, but um, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, but I appreciate all of your, um, uh, everyone's got canceled. Okay, well, I'm a, I, don't, I don't cancel class. It's not going to happen. Uh, but thank you all. Uh, that's all I have. And I will see you all. Yes, yes. Thumbs up. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll see you all uh, uh, after spring break. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay.